Uh, hi guys, uh, my name is Amol Chobe. Uh, I work for Ericsson and here is my colleague Sudhir. Hello, uh, my name is Sudhir Ketamaka. Uh, we both work uh, for Ericsson, uh, specifically for a cloud management solution. And uh, Amol is an infrastructure architect uh, and I lead one of the development teams. Um, it's going to be Amol's show today, I'll be helping him out, but if you have any easy questions, I can help with. Any tough questions, <laughs> I'll ask Amol to help out. <laughs> so we're, we're going to keep it simple. Uh, feel free, free to interrupt me and ask me any questions. Uh, so the way we are dividing this particular session is into a short presentation about the good practices on the logs and monitoring aspect of it, and then uh, there will be a lab introduction. In fact, uh, everyone, the prerequisite for this lab is to have a virtual box installed. And uh, yesterday, I believe the email was sent out for everyone to download the uh, OVA. Uh, but if you have not downloaded, we have the USBs in the room. So just ask for folks and start copying the files, because it will take quite a while to copy all the files. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll start with the short presentation. And then we will go into the lab introduction where we'll set up your dev stack. It will hardly take five minutes to set up the dev stack if VirtualBox is installed. OK? So as you uh, mentioned, right, we, we both work for Ericsson. And we have been working on OpenStack since Folsom release. And since then, like, Every release, all the new features are coming out, and we, are, we have been playing with it. So when we started uh, with OpenStack, uh, at that time, uh, especially me and my team, we struggled a lot because at that time, the installation was not that mature. Now we have a lot of vendors around who had like literally one-click installation that we have for OpenStack and all that. But installation is one aspect of it. Once we install, it's done. Then what we need to worry about is maintaining that open stack, troubleshooting that particular open stack. So this particular session is, uh, I would consider is, is more for the beginner to advance that level in that category falls down. Um, in a sense, like you got to be little familiar with open stack components and uh, basic architecture. And the labs are pretty uh, simple for the advanced user. But if you are a beginner, the labs will be kind of challenging for you. So OpenStack, right, like in the architecture, we have a lot of moving parts. So if you look at it, right, uh, if you want to create a VM, while creating a VM, we got to go to Keystone for authentication. Once you get authentication, you go to a glance to download the image. Then it is go, uh, pushed to no uh, compute and the VM is created. So there are a lot of moving parts. And because of that, right, we troubleshooting become quite a challenging aspect. Because each troubleshooting, co each component has their own logs. And we have to then dig down to those logs and try to figure out where could be the problem. So like at high level, right, I just put a basic building, uh, building block there with the core component, where you have a controller in the center. And then you have like a NOAA, Neutron, Keystone, Glance, Swift, and the Cinder uh, components surrounding it. But apart from that, there is like you have a basic set of hardware. On top of that, you have a uh, operating system and then the hypervisor. So when we are like troubleshooting OpenStack, uh, at that time, we got to worry about all these individual components. So what we're going to do is uh, we'll try to look at the basic aspect of how to troubleshoot. I'm not going to go to the each individual component troubleshooting, but uh, at least a high level where we should be looking at and what are the typical pain points for everyone. So starting with the very basic stuff like uh, logs, right? In the OpenStack, the logs are like for each component, there are different log directory, and you have to dig through it. Okay, So on the left-hand side, I have listed out for a typical distribution of OpenStack, 
what are the directories not necessary your dist all the distribution will have same sort of uh, sort of uh, log location but the lab that we are providing you is uh, is a dev stack environment so in that environment the log is located into the op stack log directory so that's uh, one thing i wanted to point out because uh, if you try to look at uh, the directories which are listed on the left hand side uh, you may not uh, find it on the dev stack uh, vm that we gave you uh, we have been using uh, uh, for the commercial version we have been using mirantis open stack uh, in uh, ericsson so those are the typical path for mirantis and perhaps it it is the same one for rdo i am not that familiar with that one but i think the path is still the same so now the basic component that we got to worry about here is the monitoring aspect of uh, the open stack so what we should do uh, like i'm giving an example of F -C fcap model which is a iso model basically we define the network management task so like fcap as it is listed out stand for fault configuration accounting performance and security so not necessary like one tool will be able to monitor all of this thing so you have to figure out what is the best tool that will monitor all these components so and we need to worry about checking at at uh, multiple levels right we got to worry about at the host operating system level uh, at the hardware level at individual open stack component level and also at the vm level which you have provision through the open stack uh typically the vm level could be the responsibility of the application side for which you have uh created the vm but these all monitoring we have to do that in order to ensure the our open stack is working sound and good now in the best practices right uh, there were in last couple of days there were lot of sessions on elk right uh, which is uh, elastic chairs logstash and kibana and i'm not sure uh, how many of you got a chance to attend those but those were the good sessions and in the market there are a lot of co commercial tools available like uh, splunk or uh, stackify which are commercial tool but if you don't have those tools right from the open source point of view uh, elk is the best model uh, i can think of where which will collect all these different components log in one dashboard okay so in nutshell what elk is elk is a elastic search uh e stand for elastic search for deep search and data analytic uh logstash is for the centralized logging and uh, you parse those log as per your need and the kibana is the gui it's a ui interface to it so if you are not look into elk model i would strongly suggest look at that and uh, as i said there was one session this morning yesterday also there was uh one session on that one uh go through those videos and try to do it yourself it will help you in the long run um then there is something called intelligent alerting right uh like uh, using a tool like, uh, like nagios or something like you can periodically check uh and uh, get the alerts like if something goes wrong or something is not right nagios will keep on sending you alert and that is the reactive state you will react to a problem then uh, there could be something called uh, proactive state uh, where through trending you can try to find uh, what's going on right so what is trending trending can give you a great insight into how cloud is performing day to day right and you can learn like uh, for example right on a busy day is it like if there are a lot of activities on noa happening there is some slowness is it a kind of a rare occurrence or uh, is it a time for you to react to it and start adding more compute nodes so that you can ease out that performance issue so trending overall is like little different than uh, alerting model right so while alerting is based on the binary result 0 or 1 whether it's working or it's not working but trending it kind of it record the current state of something at a certain point and that will help you to analyze how um, your open stack is performing then there is something called um, 
guru meditation report uh, that gives you so noah had done a good job of like integrating with that one and if you issue there is a command like kill minus user 1 if you issue that command kill minus usr on the pid of the noah api the guru meditation report gets generated and it gives you the current state of uh, what's going on in the noah it gives you the thread count it gives you what configuration your noah is running on all that so we do have a lab on that one at that time we'll discuss in more detail about that um any questions so far okay uh, i'll move on so now in troubleshooting right where to start um we have like a uh, operating system level tools uh, which if you are from the sys admin background you are quite familiar with that what are the operating system level tools or there are some open stack specific tools right so using the open stack cli you can uh, troubleshoot um then the, there are some open stack specific tools for administration aspect of it so if you want to create a user or if the vm is uh, if you want to set up uh, reset the state of the vm the so noa cli has a very specific tool for the administrator so in terms of the troubleshooting tools right the tools used to investigate or fix a problem within your stack right so that will help you to narrow down the issue where the issue is okay and also these tools need to span virtualization networking and the normal system ad administration operation so that also you need to touch base all the domain in order to figure out or troubleshoot the open stack uh, problem uh, something that we did in our lab uh, which is like we wrote our own canary script like uh, which will uh, every 5 minutes it will run it will create a vm create a volume and delete it every 5 minutes it going to run and if the run is not successful we'll get alert message uh, the advantage of that is uh, i'm creating a vm right that means my keystone glance uh, nova ne neutron all these components are working fine if vm creation is successful if i'm creating a volume that means my cinder component is working fine so this gives me like at least assurance that this is working fine if you have a third party commercial products like in agios and other then you don't need it but if you don't have those start with this at least it will help you to uh get alerts in this uh, aspect so canary script again it is specific to your lab uh, we are more uh, like in my particular group we are more focused on this these core projects but it really you have to decide for yourself uh typical commands um, i believe most of you will know um, like uh, how to check the statuses um, of like a uh, components of neutron are up or components of uh, nova is up and running so for each component there are different set of script so try to look for the nova manage uh, sorry hyphen manage so whatever you are using cinder manage or you neutron manage neutron doesn't have manage they do it through the agent list but most of these uh, core projects right they have uh, like a hyphen manage uh, extension and that's where you can like monitor the current status of it one thing i would like to bring up here like um, ntp is very important here okay so when you are across the different nodes which is running different uh, components of open stack if your time is not in sync right open stack thinks that it is down so ensure that you have ntp server setup for all these operation now troubleshooting hypervisor so again it varies by hypervisor but most of the common hypervisor used is the libworld or kvm hypervisor okay so each one has its own tooling so when you try to troubleshoot a hypervisor right we need to kind of map a virtual machine uh, to a hypervisor using a nova show command and then investigate the hypervisor through the worst tool so like typical example is uh, i'm not sure how much clear you can read on the screen but you create a vm right doesn't matter whether you create it through the heat stack or uh, 
normal uh, Horizon or a NOAA command, but you create a virtual machine. Then what you can do is you can do a NOAA show on that one. And there is something called OS extension uh, server uh, attribute for host and hypervisor. It will tell you where is your hypervisor running, on what host it is running. So what you can do is you can SSH to that host and try uh, like a K KVM has a worse something like a, a worse command line utility. You can do a worse list and try to find out whether my VM is running or not there. Now here, uh, keep it in mind, the dev stack that I gave is all in one dev stack. That means it has the operating system, hypervisor, and all the components are running on the same uh, virtual machine. But in reality, you will not have this scenario. In reality, it will be span across uh, different hosts. So now, uh, you figure out, right? You are on the, like you can go on NOAA compute host and go to a instances folder. So the VM that you have created, right? Uh, it, is, it has a UUID. So NOAA compute host will have a directory called NOAA instances. Now in our case, in case of dev stack, it is an op stack data NOAA instances. Uh, but typically there is a separate file system for NOAA in, on the compute. And that's where this folder will be. What this folder uh, tells you about, it has some files like console log, disk, uh, libword XML. These are very important files because, th like, I'll give you an example of like libword XML. Libword XML contains the information about the network that you have created, right? So, Neutron create a tab device for that one. So, it has the name of the tab device. You can actually go in there and try to figure out what is the tab device as allocated by Neutron uh, for that. So in one of the lab, we are going to look at that. The VM that you create, you're going to look at the, what is the tab device mapped to it. So this help you a lot in terms of troubleshooting when you are kind of clueless what's really going on, apart from NOAA API and scheduler log. Uh, also, what you can do is uh, you can use uh, KMU tool and get uh, info on a disk, which kind of tell you the, what is the file format, what is the virtual size of the disk, and all that information. So this comes in very handy uh, while troubleshooting. Now troubleshooting network. Now this is the network problem. It's like for the beginner or even for the some advanced user, it freaked out people. Once it's a network issue, people are clueless and try to give up. Like I'm not sure what really happening. So again, with the experience it will come, uh, the more uh, uh, you do a hands-on on the open stack, uh, it will come. But the majorly, right, there are three areas that we got to look in troubleshooting networking. One is at the Linux level, one is at the open v switch level, and then there are some open stack tools for it. So for example, right, the OpenStack tools will show you the logical configuration of your network. So there are something called uh, uh, neutron port list command. What it does is it lists out all the in interfaces and the port allocation, and then it isolates to a particular user or the net list. It shows you a network created by the cloud operator or a provider network or a tenant. Then the router, router shows a tenant or provider, uh, any router that has been created. Again, it's a only a logical view from OpenStack. But then, if that doesn't help you, right, you can narrow it down to open vSwitch level, where there are some commands like uh, OVS, VSCTL, and DPCTL. What it does is it will kind of uh, map the internal and the external bridges. Okay, So there, you can figure it out like, uh, um, what is the tab device? What are the bridges uh, created for my particular VM? So we do have a lab exercise number three, where you're going to run these commands and try to map it to the virtual machine that uh, you have created. And then there are very specific uh, Linux tools uh, that uh, is very common. Uh, but one is like, uh, we need to look inside the VLAN or Linux namespaces, because Neutron heavily uses this for if you are using a GRE type network or a VLAN or a VXLAN type network. 
So this IP net NS is your friend there. It will help you to narrow down the issues there. Okay. So we have a lab, and at that time we can talk more about this particular aspect. So in nutshell, right? This uh, if you do IP net NS so um, at that time it will look at the namespace. Okay, and the DHCP get created. So whenever you create a network, right? You need to know all the flows it goes through. Uh, so now sometimes what happened is you create a network, right? And when you boot up the VM, you see that there is no IP address assigned. Again, you get clueless, like why there is no IP address assigned. On OpenStack Horizon or command line, it shows there is IP address assigned. But in reality, when you start the troubleshooting, you realize that, oh, uh, my IP net NS shows inside a DHCP, I'm not seeing any uh, tap device uh, for my particular VM. So then the most common problem is uh, there is something called DNS mask queue, which is not up and running, and you restart it. Uh, easiest way, if you are in the test environment, is just to drop that uh, port and recreate it. That will solve the problem. But again, you should be able to narrow it down where the problem is. Okay. So we do have a lab which is going to cover that one. Now, then again, we go to the operating system monitoring, right? So again, at operating system level, you got to monitor uh, CPU, memory, uh, the availability of the OS itself, the space, disk space. A uh, couple of times I have seen issue where uh, the host OS, then you have a VMs running. Sometimes the host OS run out of the disk space. And because of that, VM is not up and running because VM tried to uh, read or write some bytes to that disk space, but since there is 100% uh, disk space utilization, you cannot really write to it. So always never ignore the host OS uh, monitoring, because sometimes the problem is at that level, and you will not able to figure it out from the OpenStack logs. Um, then process level uh, information. So all the OpenStack processes, like uh, we talked about the core component, but then there are uh, queues. RabbitMQ is very common. There is a database, Postgres or MySQL, or if you are using Silometer, MongoDB is very common for that. So you need to have the process level monitoring as well for these processes. Okay, and of course all the OpenStack component related processes. Okay, and also. Um, you should depend on the host to send out a notification to monitoring server. What do I mean by that is, when in the cloud world, right, you will have n number of compute hosts. So you should prepare a model where host is notifying back if something goes wrong. Host is notifying back through SNMP that this is wrong, rather than a monitoring server is constantly probing the host. This is the right practice. And um, the last part which I wanted to touch base is the debugger. This is a little bit for the advanced user where you are trying out everything, OK? And issue could be at the OpenStack itself, at the API level itself. And at that time, what you can do is uh, OpenStack, uh, for all the component except Horizon, is uh, written in Java, in uh, Python. So you can use a Python debuggers, OK? So this will help you at least to figure out where the issue is. But now here, the challenging part is you have to have some knowledge of Python language and uh, how the API has been implemented. So it is going into a little bit advanced user category. But I will. we have a lab, actually, that will show you a very simple use case. And you can uh, create, like set up the Python trace and uh, figure it out where the issue is. So this will help you once you get advanced with the, all the troubleshooting toolkits and all that. Debugger component will also help you to narrow down the issue. And if you can do that, you can even contribute back to the community. If you figure out this is the bug, just you can contribute it back. Default ports, as an OpenStack admin or OpenStack user, 
you should get familiar with all the default ports because on all the logs you see this default ports information and you should be aware of what component is running on what port you should be aware of that no matter what so i have listed this out uh, what i'm going to do is um, after this session is over i'm going to upload it on uh, uh, my google drive uh, for which uh, there is a link uh, uh, i'll show you right now um, so these are again the ports so in means i'm just concluding the presentation aspect of it so it is a complex topic open stack uh, troubleshooting okay but it is very easy to navigate and troubleshoot if you have proper tools and proper uh, mechanism to monitor it okay you definitely need to have a proper understanding of open stack architecture that is going to help you a lot at least how the flows are how when you create a virtual machine or when the neutron uh, goes and create a port what really have happen in the background at least have a basic knowledge of that aspect and that will really help you to troubleshoot now hands on is the key there is no alternative to hands on you have to try it out play with it and for that dev stack is the best tool like install it on your laptop and start playing with it uh, virtual box has a feature called snapshot so if you have a clean image take a snapshot of it and then play with it if it goes something goes wrong revert back to a snapshot you can but hands on is the key here so let's start with the lab now uh, so i'm assuming that everyone has copied uh, the files that we have provided for the lab uh, anybody who still need to copy uh, we have usb here uh, Yes, uh, oh, I have slide for that. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions so far? Qu Amol, uh, question here. Yeah. yeah. The image isn't working. It's, it's not possible to import. Where, where are the most complaints about this image? So the question is, uh, if the image has stopped working? No, he, he is not able to import the image. Uh, well, it should be because I did it uh, this morning. Like, yeah, it could be because uh, we had tried it out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's, uh, let me go to that screen. Uh, any other question, we'll go to lab. I'll yeah, come yeah. down. It's specifically uh, about that. Yes, it is possible to assess it to the image. So I'll uh, show you that. Uh, so what you need to do uh, just to make sure that you are using uh, this uh, 192, 168, 64 network. If you want to automatically start up the image, uh, ensure that you are using that network. How can you do that? So in the OpenStack, right? Uh, sorry, in uh, virtual box, go to File, Preferences, and Network. So if I can show on my screen. Yes. Is it before or after you import the It is before, actually. Did you? Oh, no, no. Import is good before you start it. So import is good. If you import it, you are good. But then what you do is uh, go to this uh, file, then go to uh, preferences, then go to network, and ensure that you have a NAT network set up. OK? And in here, in the host-only network, uh, at least I have three here, but uh, if you go to two, ensure that uh, you have 192, 168.64.1 defined there. Because what happened is the image that we have provided you has 192, 168.64.21 as a static IP address. So if your virtual box has this network defined, then when you boot up the dev stack and you start up the dev stack at that time, everything will be up and running. So ensure that you are doing that. Uh, I'll go and check. Uh,
of the region. Uh, let me check. So 4.3.26 and higher. So I tried with 26. And uh, so maybe that could be the reason that uh, virtual box. So in the USB, we have provided a binary for virtual box as well. Oh, yes, there is. A, yeah. OK. But just to assure you, the OVA is good. So that's good. So when you are able to finish that, you can try it out. Just just set up uh, set up like that, and that will take care of it. Uh, <coughs> what kind of IP address? Dot twenty one. Yeah. Yeah, and the credentials are dev stack, dev stack one, two, three. Um, so if you are not able to SSH, that means uh, at the virtual box level, uh, something must be wrong. So, So this is the IP address that will be. So how many of you are able to at least uh, set up the dev stack so far? OK. Um, OK. So I what, uh, so you know what, uh, what we can do is uh, I'll just run over the flow one more time uh, of this one. So, okay, okay. Let let go over the flow. Uh, okay. So, see, uh, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stop mine, and I, I'll go to over the flow. So, sorry. Let me duplicate this. Um, I cannot see. How to duplicate it? OK. So I'm going to stop my, I'm going to power off my desktop. So let us assume you are at a state where you install the virtual box, right? And you imported the image. That's all you did so far, OK? So virtual box is up and running, and you imported the image, which is in this state, OK? Now, first is go to the file and preferences, OK? And go to a network. So file preferences network. Ensure that you have a NAT network defined there. If not, just click on this Add button. That's all you need to do there. OK? Then you'll go on Host Only Network. You may not have anything if you installed uh, this uh, virtual box from scratch. So what you'll do is you'll go and do a plus here. OK? It will say yes. 
yeah so it will create a new network interface for you but what you need to do is go and edit there and ensure that that you are using 192.168.64.1 range there that is the first thing that you need to make sure you do that okay and then you click okay what will happen is virtual box will create that interface for you You okay here? Or oh, sir. You okay? Okay. You okay? Okay. You guys okay here? I think so. Okay. Okay. You guys okay with that? So good? No good? Okay. You guys okay? So what I'm trying to say is, yeah, Mac. Yeah, I tried it on Mac too. Hold on. So I went here. I preferences. I I did. Uh, uh, where is preferences? Right? Where is preferences oh, here? Ah, yeah, oh, yes, right. Exactly. Then Go then to network, network right? Host only network. network. So no, hold on. Okay. No, no, hold on. This was already defined for you.
same page. Uh, uh, just to let you know, because uh, so just to let you know, this is the page of a link to the Google Drive, and uh, you can do a QR scan as well. Uh, that's where all the OVA and the labs are posted, as well as uh, only thing is remaining uh, that I need to post it there is uh, this presentation, which I'll upload it but you can uh, download it from there. Uh, one note for the people who are starting the first lab uh, real quick is, uh, hold on. What I noticed that the cut and paste uh, doesn't work uh, when you try to do the first lab, the heat template. Heat template is uh, YAML, and it is quite sensitive about uh, uh, the format. So this PDF, the cut and paste, is not, it is messing up with the formatting of YAML. So I actually added a line there uh, in the lab. I just updated it an hour ago uh, on uh, like a wget command. So if your VM is connected to internet, you can directly download this file rather than trying to cut and paste. Because you will get an error if you try to cut and paste, unless you type it by hand. But I would suggest do not do that. On my page uh, here, I have also put the YAML file. You can directly download it from there and FTP. So whatever you are comfortable with, wget or FTP, do it from there. Yeah, you can uh, uh, actually, e easy part is go to that uh, page and download the YAML. Or you can do the wget. Still not good? No, oh, good. We did that sudo if up, it is one. You got lucky or no? He, he figured it out. He figured it out. Okay. Okay. So now, and, and, the and just, yeah. oh, no, okay, got it, got it. So. Actually, I should have told because the start dev stack script, right? You have to run that. So, if you are not able to connect to a network, run the start dev stack script. What it is doing? It is bringing up the network. I forgot about that. Yeah. No, you don't need to run stack.sh at all. Stack.sh will reinstall the dev stack for you. You don't do that. Okay, uh, so if it failed, perhaps I would suggest re-import the OVA because uh, you are you probably might be in the different stage. Did it try to do and failed? Yeah. So okay, do an ls here. Do an ls here. Uh, and there is a vi start. Uh, go 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 one directory up. Go one directory up. Start dev stack. No no. Uh, so now it might fail for you because it kind of in in the stack dot ss might have tried to recreate everything. Uh, I doubt it. You might have to reimport the OVA one more time. But try it out. Uh, dot slash start dev stack dot ss. to this is starting the services. And that is one of the reasons we are sticking with that 10, uh, sorry, 192.168.64 network, because it is pre-configured. You just start the dev stack and start using it. Stack.sh, what will it will do is it will try to redo the installation of dev stack. So that's a different. So let's see. Le what I would suggest is try to, once it come up, uh, try to go to the horizon. Uh, Go to browser. Go to your browser. Uh, type uh, 
192, 168, 64, 21, 21. No, that's it, that's it. I'll return. Let's see if it's you might have to re input. Let's see. So, just a note um, this is pre configured dev stack, uh, do not run stack.sh or something, just start up the dev stack. Uh, there is a start dev stack script, just use that to start it up. Uh, it is coming into the. No, no. This shows it is no network. Is that okay? Mm. Um, if they go to that Google Drive, they can just download or uh, can you open another session or can do get out of screen. I'm sorry, I'm. Yeah, control at D. Okay, good. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, so that.
this network you define, right? You log into dev stack, okay, and ensure that you are running the start underscore dev stack dot sh. That is going to start your services. I should have put that in the lab page. Now, now all the services will come up. Yeah, that's good. Now, leave this screen open, or you can do control E. I it is still running. It's a screen. I just give. It's on the screen. So go to the lab folder and download the uh, mystack.yaml uh, file. stack or create the new one with some hyphen one or some different name. So what happened is just a background. Noah, right? When you create a virtual machine, it really doesn't care. It allows you to create with the same name again. I can create 10 virtual uh, machines with the name something. But heat, they have a unique constraint for the stack name. So that's what the error is. NOAA completely work using a UUID, which is unique for each name. They All their call goes to the UUID. I changed the name and it So you changed the flavor to M1 Tiny, I'm assuming. No, I, I, I just changed it to mine too. No, 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 no. But the file, the, the YAML file, what did you update the flavor to? OK. This will fail. Now this will fail. This is supposed to fail. <laughs> Good. Hi, I'm Amo. Hey, what are you doing?
uh, there is a solution towards the end of this lab, uh, but what I, what I expect is, uh, if you notice, uh, you created, you try to create a stack with the flavor of M1 extra large. Extra large flavor need 16 gig of RAM. Your day stack is running on 4 gig of RAM. So you are going to bomb out saying that host not found from uh, hit stack. Host not found means what happened is call is go, goes to NOAA scheduler, and NOAA scheduler tried to find out uh, appropriate compute host which had that amount of memory. And since we do not have that amount of memory, it tells that expected RAM and what is uh, what you are trying to utilize is not there. So the workaround for this lab is just uh, change the flavor to M1 Tiny, which is M1 Tiny is of 512 MB RAM. So just try to change it and redo the stack. Uh, the people who are moved to lab two, uh, just a note, uh, in the network, try to use a predefined network, which is a part of the image, uh, to create it. And it is going to throw out the error and uh, try to troubleshoot it accordingly.
locks or anything is always run if it failed run no wash show and the name of the vm and exactly 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 look at the uh, so i know for sure but so look at uh, ram ram okay i know the error so okay. look and <laughs> look for the ram try to at least cover the high level uh, what are these lab for and what you need to watch out for in the in those labs so lab number 2 right we created uh, we have given you the predefined subnet and we ask you to create a virtual machine with that subnet if you notice that subnet has a cidr of slash -30 that means it doesn't have ip address to assign to your vm it's going to bomb out so alternative is create a new subnet and then recreate your vm you will able to create a vm so on purpose i gave you a subnet which really does not have any ip addresses and it try to assign that ip address to a virtual machine it's going to bomb out which so the first thing that you can do always uh, is do a nova show okay nova show and your vm name that itself uh, if you look uh, so so nova show vm will show you this error basically fail to allocate a network with the error no fixed ip available da 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 okay but now which log file you will go at okay now since you are running a nova command right so the first request is going to go to nova api because you are running a nova command so look at the nova n api log nova api log first so most of the distribution that we have right now they sync up everything at the controller node so if you have five compute host right most of the distribution available kind of sync all the logs to the controller and you can view it from there you don't have to navigate down to the compute host you have a centralized view so i would start the troubleshooting wise the way i will start is i'll go with the nova show try to figure out what's wrong mostly the common error is no host found but now in this case it is very specific about it i can certainly say that uh, based on my prior experience is this is the change in juno uh it uh, sorry this is the change in kilo you are running a kilo version of dev stack right now uh till juno it was always no uh, no no host find no valid host find but this is much uh, improvement in that one so you start with nova show right if you don't find any information then go to the nova api log and navigate through that one you don't bother with neutron log at this point because nova make a call and that away that's where it is telling you okay so that was the uh, problem and then basically the solution is you will create a subnet with the class 24 range and that going to solve your problem um that is lab 2 so you will create a two vms okay so at the end of the lab what going to happen is you have certain something like this view the two vm connected on the same subnet okay uh, with unique ip address okay now the third lab is the networking lab this lab is uh, it is nothing destructive in this lab the commands are there but this will help you to narrow down to find the uuid so you use a neutron netlist which give you a logical view then uh, you basically narrow down like uh, something called uh, ip net ns i am doing a sudo here keep it in mind it is only root can run this command and you figure out your dhcp so if you notice this is the uuid 
uh, of my network and this is the DHCP UUID, it is matching. So again, in your case, uh, it might be different as you create a different UU uh, networks and all that thing, uh, but just to highlight the point, okay? Then what you can do is you can go into a NetNS and do a if config on that NetNS to find uh, your DHCP server, okay? Now, whatever VM you created, right, you should be able to ping to those VM using the NetNS. So this is just showing example. So you should be able to ping both the VMs, okay? Now you should try, this is kind of a tricky part where you'll try to do a SHH to that particular network and it's gonna fail. It's gonna fail because the firewall rules are not there. So you will basically go ahead and add a security rule for port 28, which is a port for SSH. And then uh, here I actually covered uh, like how to find out the tab device associated with your VM that you created. And this is a subset of the picture, but if you look at the big picture, here is the big picture, like how the ne uh, neutron network works. And it basically, you have a VM, it creates a tab device, then a bridge, and then that gets hooked up to the physical layer of the stuff. So these l commands, it's just gonna help you to narrow down if you want to investigate what are my each layers are, okay? Um, nothing destructive in this lab. Um, then the lab is, uh, the fourth lab is about uh, guru meditation report, which I was telling, which tell you the current state of the NOAA environment. So it is just like you just gonna run kill minus USR. You're gonna find a PID. I'm uh, looking for 8774, that is NOAA API. So I'm going to do a kill minus USR on that. And in the NOAA API, it is going to generate this G GMR report, which is the current state of the NOAA. So then in the exercise, you're gonna do a trending exercise where you're just going to go and grip uh, for space 200 in the NOAA API log. What it is going to do is it is going to give you a count that how many requests was fulfilled on that in that given log file. This is helpful because if you are generating uh, a log file on the daily basis or something, you can at least see the count of the successful request and you can keep a track of it. Like if the pattern is you are creating 50 VMs a day or 30 VMs a day, you know, and suddenly you say, see today you created 200 VM. That can help you to like uh, proactively uh, figure out what's really going on. Do I need a more compute host or not? Um, same thing for info, how many calls NOAA is getting? You can get a count on that one. Then NOAA users list, uh, that is the command in NOAA which said for each tenant, uh, how much servers are there, how many RAMs are there, uh, like how many RAM is used for how long, RAM hours, it is in RAM per MB in hours, that's how it's called. But it helps you to figure out who is my tenant and how much resources that particular tenant is using. Uh, you can alternatively go to your MySQL database of NOAA and do a quota uses. So if your quota is defined, how much you are using or utilizing out of that. When you are managing multiple tenants, this is very ha helpful for you to figure out what is going on there, okay? Uh, so this, again, it is a very informative lab in that sense, and the debugger lab. Debugger lab is a little bit tricky, but the, what we are doing essentially is here is, we are trying to add a, a new key pair in the stuff, and we are giving a name like uh, y using these characters. I know that this doesn't, uh, NOAA doesn't support these characters, okay? So what we are doing is, uh, I'm showing an example, like take a backup of your api.py, which is a Python file, and then you're gonna add go to the line number 3658, set this trace up, and restart the NOAA API, okay? Once you restart the NOAA API, and if you rerun the same command again, 
your screen, which is the dev stack screen, is going to stop at one point. And you're going to go to that screen and type this safeguard, which basically read the code and tell me that these are the only allow values for this particular component. So, and then you get out, and then you restart the API. So, this is just to troubleshoot it, but get. There are, so if you Google, right, you will get tons of stuff. And so again, in OpenStack, there is something called Tempest files, okay? And there is a project going on right now uh, where they have implemented a different set of debugger, okay? This is very basic, yeah. but if you look into, there are some white papers, which I'll put it in my link okay. when I upload it. So those white papers will help you if you are interested in that aspect of it. There are tons of tools available in OpenStack for debugging. This is the most simplest one for the novice, but there are very good and powerful tools available. Um, I think only one minute is remaining. Uh, any questions? And um, I will also send uh, my email address, my Sudhir email address. If you have any suggestion for future lab, uh, please uh, do so. Yeah. Please let uh, us know. Not just that. I mean, if you for a few days, we'll we'll support any questions that you have. I'm sure at leisure, if you try this thing in a much more relaxed environment, you should be able to figure out all these labs. They're not really, yes? I just say, well, what would be helpful is a little more infrastructure to start. Not everybody is familiar with OpenBox. Yeah. Virtual Box. Virtual Box, yeah. Okay. Sure. So much more detail would significantly help. Sure. We'll do that. Okay. ELK. Yes. So that's the one I, I was telling you about that. Uh, try to use this ELK, okay? ELK. And if you cannot do ELK, there are tools available like uh, Splunk or Stackify. That those are commercial tools. Again, it's expensive. But at least if you have a good Java developer in your uh, company, you can take his help. And it's just a matter of in a day or two, you can set this ELK thing. Yeah, you can set up it on the controller node, because that's where you have direct access. You can even set up it remotely, but then you have to make a call to the controller node. Either way. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so what it does is Elasticsearch, uh, it has its own database, actually. It pull all the log, parse it, and keep it. No, no, no. It is, it is very good. The, the parsing, you tell, and you can narrow down exactly where is the issue. And you can even map the NOAA and neutron log side by side. You don't, it is pretty cool. It is very powerful. So there were a couple of sessions yesterday and today about that. Exactly so I would strongly suggest watch the video of those. No. And there was one hands-on lab. I the couldn't attend it, but lab itself. if you can get a oh, hold of that material, that will be good. He'll tell you off. I think we have to get out. All right. Thank you, but guys. Thank yeah, you for coming. He'll tell you the... Uh, thank yeah. you.